I'm here. Hey, everybody. How you doing? I'm a little behind the old schedule here today. Um, it's all my daughter's fault. I, I, I'm an innocent victim here. Um, I was asked to uh, spend some uh, time with her yesterday, which I was delighted to do. We had dinner and we talked and talked and talked. And she she and I went for a little walk after dinner and just, just it was wonderful. Daddy-daughter time. And um, I got home around 9.30 and was in bed by 10. Slept like a log last night. Uh, the problem was uh, when the alarm went off this morning, I just shut it off and kept sleeping. And I slept in. And um, I'm a little behind right now. So here I am. Uh, sorry about all that, folks. But, you know, uh, I don't have six assistants around here to wake me up, especially Jen. She's not here. She <laughs> she comes back Sunday. So I'm kind of on flying solo. Got to say, though, that... Uh, Last night was the best sleep I've had in a week. Uh, boy, that was pretty good. Um, in any event, we're here, um, and we're noticing the uh, the uptick uh, this morning in the pre-market trading. Not dramatic, but it's positive. The Dow's up 133, 0.4%. Uh, S&P is up uh, 20 points, and NASDAQ is up 74. So NASDAQ is 0.56, S&P 0.48, the Dow 0 0.40, higher um <clears throat> we're noticing oil is down a dollar 52 to 9278 big tug of war between oil analysts to insist we in the world will need more oil next year three million barrels a day because oh yeah we need more oil. uh bankers insist we're going to keep raising interest rates uh, the fed is saying it the bank of canada bank of england the eu uh central bank the ecb in other words for europe hey we're raising rates we're going to keep raising rates. We're going to get inflation down. And we know it's going to economically affect a lot of countries in different ways. We have to do it. That doesn't tell me we're going higher for oil consumption. Okay. It's, those can't work. All right. If we have a slowdown in the global economy because we have to back off the inflation expectations and the whole thing, there's no way we can just have uh, everyone use a lot more oil all of a sudden. I mean, no. Factory capacity will be a little lower fewer container ships moving containers drivers driving less uh, america pushing for electric vehicle consumption to rise america pushing hard for solar and wind energy and other sources to rise less dependence on natural gas oil europe uh, going into a major conserve mode we're not using more that that's no damn and so, who do you trust? Who do you believe? The oil promoter or the bankers, um, the central bankers? I, I'll take the central bankers. Alex, I'll take central bankers for 100. Who do you trust more? Oil analysts or bankers? Uh, what is I trust bankers more? Correct. Pick another category. Um, that's where I would be going. And, um, well... The speculators are losing on the oil front today because it's down 150 and um, the interest rate guys are kind of sitting there going watch it, it, september for um, august and september interest rate rises are likely out of the u.s uh, and don't be surprised if it's if it's half a point to a three quarters of a point maybe even a, an entire percentage point we're going to nail inflation now hard and that is the constant theme that you never stop hearing about ha however <coughs> <coughs> with all these bankers, <clears throat> excuse me, telling us straight to our face, we're going to raise rates. And they have. They've, they've done it. They're already doing it. It's not like we're going to start raising rates. No, we're six months now. Let's, don't think they're not going to keep going. They are. Then why is the stock market doing so well? I ask you that question. I mean, come on. Why would the stock market be going up if um, if uh, interest rates are going to go higher? You know, the bankers are saying interest rates are going to go higher. Um, this this is the this is the uh, the question, and uh, the answer um, multiple and and complicated. But uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to basically one thing: um, uh, greed. Uh, oh yeah, that's what it is. We're we're we uh, collectively those of us that out there who you know are market participants 
I, as a as an outsider talking to you about what's going on, we're greedy. And uh, when we see an opportunity, we aren't stupid. We take it. Um, we are given uh, opportunities from time to time to uh, jump into the market. Look at Austin Hurt. Austin Hunt. Hey, buddy. Thank you for becoming a YouTube member of this channel. I uh, love it. A um, little busy at the moment, but man, am I glad you're a, you're a chillin' with Uncle Bruce member. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome to the party, pal. Um, we're greedy and we're in need of wins and we'll find ways and places to win if at all possible. Um, th th this is exactly how we, how we are, how we operate. Institutions are greedy. Pension funds need to make money. Hedge funds need to make money. And if, hey, if there are more buyers and sellers, stocks are going up. And if sellers believe that I think the market can go higher, I don't think I'll sell a, as many shares as I need to sell or I was going to sell. B, I'll wait another week before I sell something. C, actually, I think that the shares I have might go up another little, you know, one or two percent more. Be so I'll wait and then sell. D, we do get to that level and then they go, I think I'll wait and sell a little later because remember, Wall Street never says sell. They've never tell you to sell ever anything so people hold back and not every single seller doesn't sell we have to have volume to make the market go up uh, you know there has to be a buyer seller every time there's a transaction in the market but up go the prices right just like housing prices uh, people think housing prices are going to go up the house down the street sold for fifty thousand more than people thought it would sell well the seller sold it the buyer bought it and then the next house in the neighborhood sold for 25000 more. Again, that seller sold it. That buyer bought it. Two different people, two different mentalities and thinkings, and, and, and housing prices rise as a whole, right? But there have to be buyers and sellers on the way up. We're having that here in the market. Sure, there's volume. But it, I don't think it's heavy volume. I don't think it's like overpowering tsunami wave volume. It's a reality that you have to understand no matter what the economy is doing no matter what the, uh, the sentiment is in the stock market or inflation whatever it's doing interest rates there's always more money fresh cash there's always fresh cash coming into the stock market and bond markets through the existing economic systems that are out there and the area where cash keeps coming into the market from is the gigantic machine that has been created from the 30s, 40s, 50s, all the way up to now called the pension fund system. And every employee, uh, let's say every employee within an organization large enough um, is part of a pension plan, a company pension plan like the teachers of America and Canada and elsewhere are part of their union's pension plan. The firefighters and then the police officers, the federal employees of federal governments, uh, city government employees, state governments, provincial governments in Canada. Billions of people, uh, a billion workers. I don't know what the number is for sure, but it's a huge, huge, huge number in the Western world, in the G20. Uh, a very high percentage of people who are working for a living have some form of a pension kind of thing in their pay packet, <coughs> which means <coughs> they get a deduction from their gross pay goes straight into a retirement plan. The employer matches or contributes something as well based on how much you put in, they put in. And that money is shipped, transferred electronically, automatically every week, every two weeks, every month to the administrator of said funds, which is determined by the employer and employees. They figured this out years and years ago. And every day teachers retire, every day uh, teachers get hired, every day firefighters retire, every day firefighters get hired, police officers, uh, office workers, uh, truck drivers, you name it. I mean, just e everywhere. It's a turnover of life. But these pension funds keep getting, keep getting cash. They keep having it brought in to the tune of billions and 
billions of dollars per month, billion, tens of billions of them, always. That money must be distributed. It has to be put to work. It has to make more money. And so there are pension fund managers, hedge fund managers, mutual fund managers, you name it, all over the place who are constantly getting cash injections to put it to work. There are also these same people. They're getting cash every week, every month from bonds that they bought and are sitting on that pay interest payments on a regular basis. Some bonds pay interest once a year, some pay once a month, some pay every quarter. It's, it's all complicated. There's treasury notes that are 30-day notes that are 60-day notes, 90-day treasuries, one-year treasury. There's always cash coming in to the fund managers to manage, and they have to allocate it somewhere. And they have to have it working for the fund to be able to pay the mortgage, uh, the, mortgage the pension benefits to the pensioners from these entities. Again, billions come in, billions go out, billions get invested. It's a giant wheel, okay? You watching me here, all right, you have cash flow yourselves, your own personal cash flow on a micro level for you. And it's important as hell. And some of you are able to put some money to work in the market. Some of you are taking money out of the market. Some of you need the market to make you money per month. It's all your own little same thing. And there are billions of you guys. And so the giant <coughs> world in which we live. All right. We're into a recession, they say. And the uh, GDP of the United States is down a half a percent. Well, that means 99 and a half a and percent of the GDP is still GDP. I mean, uh, unemployment is three and a half percent in the United States. That's called zero employment because uh, you know and I know there's help wanted signs everywhere. Um, there's money flowing always. We heard last week the United States government has more money coming in right now and less money going out right now to run one of the smallest deficits for the month of June, was it? It was unbelievable. It was like really low. Um, yeah constant flow of cash always 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 and um the the markets always have cash coming into them whether it's the stock market whether it's the bond market uh whether it's the futures market there's always cash flowing around don't forget corporations that pay dividends you know a lot of companies pay dividends in cash but they also offer dividends in stock so for IBM, you might have IBM stock and you're supposed to receive uh, $6.80 next month in a dividend for your share, but you've opted to receive stock instead. And so you get $6 worth of stock delivered to you by the company. Some of you have mutual funds, ETFs, where the dividend is payable to you in units and you don't get the money, you get units and you're just adding to the number of units you own. Some of you are looking after your parents or grandparents' investments, and you're looking at mutual funds they bought 25 years ago, they still have today, but you're looking at it going, wow, these statements from 1999 or these 2007 statements show that grandma and grandpa bought 528 units of blah. Now they have 748 units of blah. Yeah, because the units keep putting in more units, which keep it's interest on the interest. And so over 20 years, they're, yeah. Uh, this was the promise of financial advisors, stockbrokers, back in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s when many were you know employed and there was nowhere else for you to go to put your money to work. Uh, you had it managed by various management groups, including mutual fund managers. And the strategy was you, you put 100 a month into the account or 50 a month into your account personally, and every dividend you get just gets reinvested and compounds and compounds. And over 10, 15, 20 years, in other words, from when you're 30 until you're 50 or 35 until you're 55, that, that window where you just keep pouring in the dough and never stop making these contributions. By the time you're done, there should be a pot of money there that you can lean on and retire on. What they don't tell you, and they can't, because how can they tell you, 
is uh, all along the way, we're going to have a couple of hiccups. Like there's going to be a financial crisis in 2008 that's going to effectively wipe out 10 years of returns for everybody. And we have to kind of build back up again. Well, if you're 35 and now you're 45 and the financial crisis hits, you still have 20 more years to keep building for your retirement. But if you're 65, 68, when the financial crisis hits and you've gone from the age of 65 wealth to the age of 45 wealth in a month, and you've got cancer and you're not feeling too, you know, you're not going to be around another 10 years to enjoy the recovery. An entire lifetime of wealth has just, poof, right? The equity in the house has gone poof. Uh, that's what no one can tell you, right? COVID, who the hell knew COVID was going to do what it did economically to the system and watch the market take a dip in March 2020. Uh, thankfully, it recovered, but boy, that was kind of scary, wasn't it? Um, th there's the issues of life. But the good news, again, even when the markets have a dip like this, terrible dip, money keeps coming into the market every month. It just keeps coming in. There's no stopping this massive machine that just turns over all the time. And so capital keeps coming, it keeps coming, it keeps coming, coming. Governments pay interest on their debt to bondholders that own government debt, which are pension funds and mutual funds, <clears throat> government, very, the government's very own pension funds for their very own people. <clears throat> the United States citizens, Canadian citizens pay interest on the bonds that this these countries have issued <clears throat> like every other country europe and everywhere else <clears throat> money keeps turning over so when you hear oh yeah the deficit of the united states is one trillion dollars and the united states government owes 22 trillion dollars guess who they owe it to <laughs> some of you go well they owe it to china yeah, somewhat. Yeah, China owns some of that debt. Yeah. The biggest holders of American debt, Americans, biggest holders of Canadian debt, Canadians, the biggest holder of Chinese, uh, Chinese debt, Chinese, Japanese debt, the Japanese, the UK, U United Kingdom uh, citizens, countries issue sovereign bonds of their country. And the buyers are generally the people of the country itself, they're borrowing against their futures indirectly. They don't even know it. They don't realize it. And the teachers' pension funds and the firemen's pension funds and the, uh, and everything else, police and, and all the other workers out there, a good chunk of the income has over the decades has come from the governments themselves. And this is the way the game works. And every week, the United States government raises fresh cash to pay off old bonds and roll them over into new bonds <clears throat> and add a little extra additional money for spending right now because there's a deficit being run. And so they, they borrow $30 billion to pay off the old debts and then borrow $5 billion on top of that to kind of handle this next batch of money they need. And that is all borrowed from the pension funds that are beginning interest on all this money, they're turning it around. So the pension fund brings in a billion dollars in interest and spends a billion dollars on new bonds to bring in more interest. There it is. Part of these monies end up in the stock market. They end up in the wheel. So that's why the markets are up right now. The markets are higher because the existing money machine is bringing money in and investors are thinking more positively about the market right now because they saw interest go inflation go down half a percentage point and they're going <clears throat> the recession is over ah uh, there are people out there who are bold enough to say we should have lower interest rates next year because inflation has been beaten we have beaten inflation it's beginning to back off oil and gas is lower your gas price is down inflation is lower We've done a great job, everybody. Elect me as your next politician. Everything is great. Getting ready to sing Kumbaya next summer when everything is absolutely fabulous. Forget the war in the Ukraine. Forget China and Taiwan. Forget the Chinese implosion that's happening where they don't pay mortgage. Forget the layoffs. Forget the headlines from Apple, Microsoft, Intel, on and on, where every company says, 
we're going to cut back on our hiring. We're, we're cutting back on our spending. We're not quite going to reach our third quarter projections. Forget all that. Don't, don't, don't listen to any of these negative things. You don't need to listen to that. All you need to listen to is the happy, good time stories that we want to give you. Because why? November is election day. And right now, until election day, it's good times. Everything is great. Those, are the, those who are in office want to stay in office. Those who aren't in office want to get into office. And then they want to get their pound of flesh out of the, the system for their pals and their backers and their CPACs and their super PACs and their what have you. And so the oil guys are saying, we're going to use more oil next year. Um, the uh, housing guys, it's going to be a better year. The uh, politicians are saying, Unemployment is really low and everything's going to be just super Jim Dandy. Uh, that's what you're hearing right now. And it's dominating everywhere you go. And you're, they're trying to influence you, whoever they are. And they are everything. They are everywhere. And why wouldn't the oil and gas guys tell you this? And why wouldn't the real estate developers tell you this? And why wouldn't shopping mall owners tell you how great it is? What, are they idiots? They're going to tell you it's really bad out there? They're going to say... Yeah, we've had five stores leave the mall, and we know we're going to lose five more stores. Or we just found out that our negotiations for 15 stores, we're trying to get them to sign new leases starting next year, February. They're walking. They're going to close this Christmas, and they're out of here because they're going online, and they're walking out of here. Are they going to tell you that? They're going to brag to you about, yeah, we're going to lose 15% of our tenants. <laughs> we're going down. No, they're not going to do that. They're publicly traded companies. They're not going to do that. They're going to, everything's great. Everything is wonderful. The mall has been re-renovated and it's beautiful. Santa Claus will be here. Come and get your photos. Everything is fantastic. And you're driving around town talking to pals and friends and relatives. And what? Uh, that company is laid off 20 people? What? Uh, there was supposed to be an expansion of that and it's not not happening now? Oh, look at those. Um, look at those. Uh, those offices over there, that, that that campus, it looks like a, it looks like a whole bunch of buildings were being built over there. They're kind of just like nobody there. Um, the buildings are half done, and no one's finishing them. What about that building downtown? Isn't there? There was supposed to be a new condo, like an eight-story condo downtown. It, there's nobody there. Like, where's the crane? Where are the workers? It's just standing there, half done. You're seeing that, aren't you? I'm seeing it. It's happening here in Calgary. Oil, oil town, Calgary, I'm seeing projects stopped. I see the cutbacks. I see the pullbacks. This is the fringe. It's at the fringe. And it is happening. And uh, this market has got the blinders on right here. And right outside the blind, just over here, right over there, right over there, there's carnage. But I don't see any carnage. I'm looking into the future. And the future looks wonderful. Everything's going to be great. Uh, all I have to do is reelect my existing politicians and everything will be continually wonderful hmm okay well let's see how it works out okay um we're up 137 on the dow so there are more believers in the upside of the future than doubters right at this very nanosecond with uh what is it 24 or 34 minutes to go until we start trading everything looks great does it look mega great no not not really great. It looks okay if we're higher, but not by very much. And uh, beginning to get the sense that we might be close to topping out in this market for a little bit. And a couple of factors are going to take over. One of them, I've already mentioned the word, greed. Greed is about to take over anticipation. The anticipation of the upside has been moving the markets. Anticipation of, of, of lower inflation, anticipation of lower interest rates, anticipation of going back to the way we were, even though the way we were was all screwed up, by the way. It was all screwed up, but, you know, let's go back to the way we were. All that anticipation. Now, greed is going to kick in. Uh, those sellers that were going to sell a month and a half ago, they're going to get out of the market. Uh, June, we hit the lows, and uh, July, we have a little recovery, but I don't believe in it. I'm going to get out. Well, wait. If it goes up another, if my stock goes up another dollar, then I'll sell it. Those people, they've been doing this now for weeks. There's more of them now. Uh, however many there were thinking of selling, 
at the low and how many were thinking of selling just after the low was breached and we went or, or was was beaten and we went higher and then we went higher again more sellers are piling up now more potential sellers are going as soon as it back tops out i'm going to sell and that and there are now more of them coming in going i'm i've got my seller i'm ready now i'm i'm so old school okay that i'm holding in my mind a pink piece of paper called a sell ticket okay i'm ready to sell as soon as i see the stock top up whatever stock i'm talking about whether we're talking about Apple at $170 a share, Microsoft near $300 a share, uh, Goldman Sachs near $350 plus a share. We're talking about a lot of stocks that have gone up nicely. Uh, Amazon from the low 100s to the 13040s, Google, same thing. I mean, there's a, there are billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars that have been brought into this market. Valuations have risen dramatically on a lot of top-notch stocks. And have you noticed the UBI, the Uncle Bruce index is, is higher too. And there are people out there going, hey, maybe I should be, uh, you know, maybe I should be uh, taking a profit. Now, you as option writers, I keep yelling at you in a polite way, uh, do not fear the upside. And this morning, I'm going to tell you, the time has come to start writing options on some of your SPACs. It might just be now the right time to start offering options on your SPACs. Now, why am I saying this today? I'll tell you why. All eight SPACs have made their reports known. They've all come out and they've all brought out their second quarter financials. Last night, uh, Rocket Lab, Smart Rent, they were the last two. Six Terra was yesterday morning. Matterport Spire a couple days ago. And before that, we had so SoFi and ATIP and they all they all come out. They're, they're all out. There are no more re reports due. And now we can take a look at how did they do? How did the stocks survive the uh, release of their financials? And you take a look at Rocket Lab. We're at five ninety eight. You might want to write six fifty or seven dollar call options now for maybe um, September October. Perhaps SoFi, you might want to write $8, 850 contracts. What about uh, Matterport? Might want to write six, six fifty, seven dollar contracts for the next month or so. What about 23andMe? It might be time to write five, five fifties. Um, Spire, can't really write on those. They're too cheap at a buck and a half. So whatever proceeds you get, what do you do? You buy Spire. ATIP, you buy it at 98 cents. You use the money you're getting to buy. Smart rent, hard to say. We got to wait for the opening today. What the hell's going on? It was 561 yesterday. We'll maybe wait until Monday to figure out what to do on smart rent. Six Terra, 1005 this morning. What the heck is this all about? Maybe we write 11s for next month. And there you have it. We now start to look at writing options on some of our SPACs to start bringing in some cash to either buy more of the very SPACs that we're writing on or we're going to start to buy uh, stocks like ATIP and, uh, and uh, Smire at super cheap prices and just put the dough into there and buy that up, grab it. <clears throat> that could be the strategy, all right? Another strategy is you, you put $1,500 together, $2,000 together, something like that. And what are you going to do? You're going to buy another HPQ deep in the money option. You're going to buy another Cisco option. You're going to buy another Pfizer option. You're going to buy another, uh, you're going to try to buy an Apple deep in the money, but you might not want to go there at the moment. Apple at 170, kind of high. It's, I, I'm more worried about it going lower. I don't want you to buy an in the money option and then ha write a contract, have the stock go down, and all you're doing is breaking even. I mean, your option you bought is down $4, and the stock option you wrote is down $3, and you're you're not going anywhere yet. You want to kind of catch the lower, a lower low and then go from no rush to run into Apple. It's had a nice run. But there are stocks out there like HPQ and uh, stocks like um, uh, Cisco and uh, uh, Pfizer and a number of others that are definitely worthy of your attention. And for a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, eleven hundred dollars, there are a number of stocks where you can buy deep in the money calls and now become an option writer on those stocks forever and ever and ever. Not a bad idea. 
Um, just bear with me here. Looking through the list of what we're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Pfizer, uh, $48 stock. Um, and um, we uh, we uh, are trading right now at um, uh, 48.50 up 21 cents. I mean, th th this is where you look to buy 38 to 40 dollar contracts, 20 plus percent in the money into next year expiry, and you're looking to write 50 dollar calls, something like that. HBQ, 34 dollar 65 cent price right now. You're looking to buy 25 dollar calls, 26 dollar calls. Nice deep in the money. You're looking to write on these. Uh, Twitter, perhaps uh, you might even buy Twitter 38s and write on those, like write 46s. Um, on the other hand, you avoid it because of the Musk thing, you wait it up. Eventually, Twitter will disappear. So, you may want to avoid it. Um, Alphabet 120 bucks and Amazon 142. They both gone up significantly. There could be some downside problems there. So, you may not want to buy deep in the money calls there right now. Uh, they're just overpriced. <clears throat> Um, Cisco, like I said, um, definitely, uh, but Apple at 169.75, a little high right now. I, I'd want to wait. If I already have deep in the money calls on Apple, I'm going to keep writing contracts. I'm going to keep on writing rollovers and write, write, write. Absolutely. Now, here's another situation. I had a question that came in from one of our viewers who wanted to know what do I do? Um, I have a situation here where <clears throat> I had GameStop. They split on me. Um, I had written contracts. They split. I got exercised in some of my stock. I covered my short position by buying the stock back. <clears throat> I, 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 I'm still writing uh, contracts. I, I now have uh, uh, options in the money um, on, on the stock, and I'm writing options on it. What should I continue to do, and how should I continue to do it? And I uh, want to say to the viewer, you're doing it right. Um, there are times where it gets kind of hairy out there where, you know, you think it's kind of simple. All you do is you just, uh, you just, um, uh, you know, buy stock, write options on it. Uh, but when the stock splits four to one, like GameStop did, uh, that changes everything. <clears throat> and then you ask yourself, what happens now? Well, your options split too. Now, instead of writing one or two contracts, you're writing four or eight contracts. It's, it's welcome to the, to this world. Everything is one quarter of the price, so it's all relative. But okay, uh, and then uh, um, you, you write you write on a contract, uh, you write a contract or two or three or four, whatever it is, and, and the stock keeps going up, and you get you get exercised. No, no, what? <clears throat> if you weren't able to roll over before you get exercised, you get exercised. Well, now you get a bunch of money in your account. Now, now what are you going to do? Well, uh, as I say, a number of you um, have found yourselves in a position where you went into cash nicely. You made money on the trade you did, by the way. When you wrote your call way back when, you wrote a call at 120, 130, whatever it was. You, you got the premium. You now get to keep the premium and you get bought out. And that's all your money. Forget what the stock's trading at. You are up on your transaction. There's more money and more value in your account today than a month or two ago. Fair enough. All right. Well, now what do you do? You want to now add to this money. And some of you have taken the idea further to say, Bruce, I'm going to buy deep in the money calls. I'm going to write more options than I used to write because I want more income. And I say, yes, do this, but make sure that the contract that you buy, the deep in the money contract you buy is out far enough. So it's not a problem that it doesn't expire in like the next, um, uh, say, uh, month or two. You want to buy deep in the money calls that will expire next january february march april May, even even a year from now if can you go that far that that is what you want to be able to do okay you also want to make sure that you buy it low enough that it's in the money far enough you can't have an in the money call by unlike gamestop you can't have the stock trade at say uh, uh, 39.50 and you buy 35 dollar calls and you're going to write against those that's not a good idea all right, that that's not that's a bad idea. Wrong. Okay, Alex, what is wrong? Um, you got to be buying thirties or twenty eights or twenty fives. Yeah, they're more expensive, but they're further into the money, and they got to be down the road. And the price you pay for these contracts have to be 
all book value. 90% of the price has got to be book value. 10% or less has got to be time premium. Might be easy to do, might not be easy to do on, on GameStop. You got to keep your eye on the option chain all the time. You have cash waiting to buy in the money calls. And you're watching those in the money call prices fluctuate. And then you put in your stink bits. And then when they hit, you get them. And now you're a writer. Okay, fine. You're a writer now. But as a writer, you now want to write uh, at the money, ahead of the money, probably ahead of the money, and a couple of weeks forward. That's about it. You don't want to write six-month-out contracts. You want to write one to three-week-out contracts, the ones that are in all out of the money, and they have a nice premium on them that you're just going to watch shrink out. This is how you're going to make your dough. This is how you have to do it. And um, uh, when you figure out the numbers, you realize, okay, I, I pay $2,000 for a call. Then I receive $300 for a call that I sold, I wrote. I bought it back for $100. I made $200 on this call. It cost me two grand to be able to do this. And this was uh, 10 days. And every 10 days, I'm doing the same thing theoretically again and again and again. And in the end of a 30-day run, the two grand I spent, I made 600 on it, and I keep on going. And you do the math and go, $600 return on a $2,000 investment, hey, that's 30% on my money. Uh, $20,000 investment, 10 calls. $6,000 return on writing. It's all relative, isn't it? You can do it on one, two, three, four, five, as many as you want. That is how you do this game uh, on, on, uh, on HPQ and on, on the others. You will buy 20, 25% in the money contracts at least. And then right from there to be, you have to be careful if you want to do this on, do this on Apple because Apple, you have to now buy one thirties on Apple, which are $40 in the money. And you're risking $40 of, of cash book value plus some premium on that, you're risking that if the shares go to 150, <clears throat> you're risking half of that value because if the shares go from 170 to 150, your contracts will go from like a $45 value to a $25 value. You've made money on writing options against that loss. Yeah. And if the shares go back to 170, you'll, you know, you'll be even on these contracts and you've written, written, written over a year. But you have to be thinking, okay, I'm buying in at a high level here because the Apple shares were 120, 30. Now they're 170. They could go back to 150 here. And I have to be prepared to handle this fluctuation, tolerate it, deal with it on option writing, and wait it out that they'll come back up again. And, you know, you've got to be mentally strong. Now, the another question I had from the viewer was, Bruce, I bought options on my stock, deep in the money call options. Um, I'll use an example that I'm going to pretend I made up. Okay, let, 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 let's say it's after the split on GameStop. We're trading now 40 bucks a share, okay? And uh, uh, somebody buys a deep in the money call option today and they buy 30s or 25s. Let's say 25s. They buy 25s, costing them 1,500 plus premium. Well, you know, okay. So there's 18, 17, 1800. Let's just in that neighborhood, whatever. They write and they write, and and the stock is fluctuating, but now it starts to move up over the next month or two. And GameStop reaches 50 dollars a share, all in theory. So the the option buyer they bought deep in the money options at 25. The stock has gone up from 40 to 50. So those contracts are not 15 in the money. They're 25 in the money. Can you sell those contracts for a profit, turn around and buy $30 deep in the money contracts instead? In other words, can I buy higher priced contracts than I had that will cost me less money? For example, I bought these 25s for, like I was saying, $1,700 each that expire next uh, March. Can I sell those for a profit because the stock went up? Yes, you can. And then buy back new deep in the money calls. That might be March or might be April or May, but they are $30 expiry uh, levels instead of 25s. Yes, you can. Could they be less in price because they have a higher strike price? They could be. They could be the same price because they have more, more time and they're 
closer in, but they could be cheaper. And if they are cheaper, can I just take that money? Yes, you can take them and do whatever you want with it. Or could you buy an additional call option? You had eight of the 25s. Could you get 10 of the 30s? Now you can write 10 contracts against your contracts instead of eight against eight. It's 10 against 10. That's another two contracts you're writing, more capital coming in. Can you, between writing calls uh, as they depreciate, build up that cash, flip over, roll over your deep in the money calls as your stock is going higher into higher priced calls, use the gain on that, add it to the gain on your writing, keeping in mind your tax bill, and write and buy additional deep in the money contracts that might get you from 10 to 15. And now you have 15 in the money contracts. Yes, you can. You can absolutely do that. Another strategy is <clears throat> you have 10 deep in the money calls. And the stock's gone up five bucks in the last month. So your in the money calls are richer, right? They're more valuable. You're a happy guy. You're a happy girl. And you're writing on, on them. You're writing on them, writing on them, writing on them. <clears throat> you built up some cash. And you roll over your calls for further out in time same strike price or a little higher strike price and it's a, it's a flat purchase you you receive 30 grand and you spent 30 grand you still have so many calls out there 10 out there all right but you got this cash lying over here from the time depreciation you've made the last six months you have all this cash you could now buy deep in the money calls but not the same ones you could, in theory, say, you know, I got 10 deep in the money calls that are good for a year. I'm going to buy five in the money calls that are good for six months, three months that are closer to the money. <clears throat> I'm a gambler here. So I got my 10 core contracts. I write 10 calls on those. They're a year out. They're way in the money. Now I bought 10 closer into the money. Still got protection here. Three, six months of time instead of one year of time, I'm going to write 10 on those as well. Now you're writing 20 contracts. You're looking for a two-week hit because it's a two-week cycle on your contract writing. So you're now writing 20 contracts for two weeks, 10 against the older, longer ones, 10 against the shorter, closer-in ones. And once that is, you are either selling those 10 deep in the money calls, those the ones you just bought, <clears throat> or you're rolling them maybe a further out in time, you're constantly adjusting those because they have to be dealt with. They're, they too are losing time, but you may find that you're doing a two week right and another two week right. And then you're gonna buy back, sell off those calls, those in the money calls that are now down to like a month ago and picking up three months time frame call, calls instead and now writing another 10 again. Totally up to, up to you. You're managing your account. You're the asset manager. You're the one determining and, and, and feeling the vibe of your stock that you're writing against. You know it intimately. You should be. And you're watching this, the, the, the markets. You're listening to Uncle Bruce, and you're figuring out where these markets are going. And you are governing yourself accordingly. But you have learned all of these tricks from your buddy Uncle Bruce here by watching his classes and listening to him on the air and listening to his rants, even though he sleeps in. And um, you're picking up these little tips and you're beginning to understand, you know, this guy's right. I can make enough money to quit my goddamn day job. I can get away from that endless cycle of crap down there. And I can be at home and I can do my thing. And I don't even have to be at home. I can do this in Zermatt. I can do this in Zurich. I can go to London. <clears throat> I can go to uh, Los Angeles. I, I can go to uh, uh, Juno for a week. I can take a cruise. As long as I have internet on the cruise ship, I can do this wherever the hell I am. And I can do it the way I want to do it. And um, the heck with this working at the same cubicle. And they keep telling me how lucky I am to have this job. I mean, come on. Really? I'm not the one driving the new Mercedes. You are. You're the one telling me how lucky I am. And you got the new car. I'm driving the old beater down here. I don't feel lucky. I don't feel fortunate. I don't get it. I'm missing the I'm missing the vibe, man. But if I'm on my own and I can do my own thing, and with Uncle Bruce's guidance, 
I'm figuring out how I can do my own thing. And with people like Robert Benson throwing me the 99th thumbs up while I'm ranting and raving, how can we go wrong? I can't go wrong. I get 100 thumbs ups from some of the most incredible viewers YouTube has got. And then there's the others who are working for a living. I tell you, you got to be kidding me. Uh, kids, 105 thumbs ups are in here right now. Thank you so much for helping me out in my hour of need. Uh, we're opening in 12 minutes. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's get going. I have heard that enough, says Jules. Uh, I've heard that for enough. Too risky for the average trader? These aren't average traders in this room. Jeff, if you hang around here, you know these are not average traders. Uh, the people in this room are different. They're writers. They're not traders. Uh, we don't trade stock. We write options. And uh, we uh, let gamblers gamble on our stock. They take the risk. We take the money. It's quite simple. Uncle Bruce made good money um, on GameStop short yesterday. Uh, can you take a look at five-day chart on Carvana? I'm looking into shorting Carvana. What do you think? It's a, I think it's an easy drop of at least $4. Um, I would watch that Carvana. If it pops this morning, right, it may have like a first hour, hour and a half of a good opening. That's when you may want to pounce on it. Um, kind of like yesterday. It had a good first hour or two, popped up, then sort of topped out a little bit. That might be the, the strategy on our Carvana. Right now, Carvana is um, up 140 to 5153, from what I can tell you. And um, <clears throat> here, let me see here. Here it comes. Yeah, up 152 right now, 5165. Did touch 652 today. You know, so if it wants to pop 52, 52 and a half, 53 this morning, let it happen. Let it run. Um, you know, it did hit yesterday 5732. So don't think it can't do it again. Um, you got to. You got to grab these guys. You got to hit these guys when they, you know, have a blow off a little too much. And of course, this is a company that's gone from three hundred and sixty-four dollars down to nineteen forty-five. Um, and as a shorter, I know your strategy. You want to pop in there, hit that sucker, and then um, you know buy it back and score a nice little gain and move on. Uh, I get it, but the thing you don't want to do is, is short at fifty-three and have it go to fifty-eight today. And stay at 57. You, you, know, you don't want that. That would be that's a bad thing. So keep an eye on the uh, the start of the day for the stock. See how the markets are doing overall, and let's find out together. Are we going to witness uh, the Dow Jones, um, uh, Nasdaq, S and P? Are they going to have a rip roaring start and then give up some juice, or are they doing? Are they going to do what they seem to be doing right now, which is already giving up some ground? And um, and we're going to be lower uh, to start the day. Um, you know, we are due for a correction. And I like your idea, Nick. And I like your intent uh, because I think the market is timing right for you. I think for all of you who are option writers, today's the day to write options. And um, let's grab let's grab some cash and let's go. So take a look at the stocks you own out there. Get ready to. Uh, um, you know, get ready to hitting it. Bill is thinking the same thing. I'm thinking of shorting this too. Um, keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, uh, Bama Babe, uh, Jules, um, uh, Bama Babe is saying to Jules, if you cannot afford the classes, $100 for a class, uh, then there are many free YouTube clips by Uncle Bruce that will help. I'm concerned about you investing in this market and you cannot afford a $100 class. Exactly. If you can't afford a $100 class, frankly, you can't afford to invest in the market. <laughs> Just the, 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 It's the hard reality. I mean, this is not for penny traders. All right. What I recommend to do by writing options on stock positions or on poor man covered calls I don't come out here and say, oh, with $300, you can turn it into $3,000. I don't do that. Uh, that's not what we talk about here. Uh, that doesn't happen in this option market. This You need to raise some capital. You need to build some capital. I don't know. Whatever your situation is, is your situation. We've, we've all built from somewhere. But you have to, as far as I'm concerned, um, you really want to invest in the classes. Um, learn the knowledge pick it up because you want to get into the option writing business this is an entirely different market than the stock market and um 
you have to understand both of them and have to want to understand both of them. And if you take class one, two, three, four, you will quickly get a refresher on how it all is happening, how one works with the other. Uh, but I, my classes are basic. I mean, my, my 13 classes I put together are kind of basic classes. If you talk to professionals who are option traders for a living um, at Wall Street-based brokerage firms, uh, they will look at my classes here and there and they'll go, this is like uh, 101 stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's all you need to know. But you need to know it well to make a nice living in this business. I am trying to keep you away from complicated derivatives trading. I'm keeping you way out of there. I will never take you there because you will get your butt handed to you. Where with option writing, you guys want to quit your day job and, and live a comfortable uh, lifestyle, uh, be able to trade your account on the road, on holiday, uh, visiting relatives through the through a uh, uh, trip to see relatives on a summer whatever. Your account is here. And you can trade options right on here. You can write options on here, buy them back, and enjoy a higher quality of life. That's what I'm about. That's what I'm hoping to help you with. So become a member of this channel and join the gang right over here. Subscribe to this channel. Take the classes. And if you have the capital, uh, then you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with me, let me know, and we'll get together for a one-on-one. -on -one. That'll run you $400, but you will get much more value than that back having one-on-one -on -one with me for an hour. We'll figure out where you're going. Uh, we'll get you on the right side of this market. Guys, so much fun. Um, Michael, I made uh, $700 flipping Emmy calls twice yesterday. Not the best or worst week. Um, anyway, there it is, kids. Welcome one, welcome all. We're six minutes away from uh, opening. Can you short in the pre-market? Depends on your platform. Uh, yep, some can. Uh, can definitely do that. You have to look into your, you know, your platform, see what's going on. Thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. Uh, it's great to see you. Um, anyway, Uncle, which class would you suggest and how much are they? For beginners, uh, <laughs> it's $100 a class. Each class is about two hours long. You can rewatch them as many times as you want. Start with number one and then go to number two and then go to number three. Put in a few months if you have a limited money. Scrape a hundred bucks together every two or three weeks. Watch a class every two or three weeks. Rewatch the classes. Get familiar with the terminology of what we're talking about here. Follow this gang right here. The, the, this gang right here is worth the price of admission to a class because these people ask me questions all the time about trading options, and you will learn by watching them learn and watching them trade, and you'll pick it up. Um, but the classes are very important. All right. Uh, that's why I made them. And um, away we go. Thank you, all of you, for joining me here today. My gosh, look at this. We have 120 thumbs ups. We're getting ready to start training here in four minutes. Hit the thumbs up button for me. Let's pound that sucker. It's option expiry day, baby. Let's get these thumbs ups going up to 200 as quickly as humanly possible. Help me out there with the thumbs ups, everybody. And let's get going. Uh, we're up 14 on Rocket Lab with uh, five or so minutes to go. SoFi's up 17. GameStop 39.99 up 53. AMC at 26.72 up 126. Matterport down four. 23 and me up 14. Spire, no changes yet. ATIP up two cents. Smart rent, uh, no changes, or are we trading? 476. I'm not 100% sure on what smart rent is doing. Hang on. 2000 traded. I, I, I'll i wait till the opening to see what's really going on. I don't know about this price. Sextera, no trades yet. Apple up 117. Goldman up $4 to 355. Cisco up 12 cents. Tesla up eight bucks, 871. Arc Innovation up 87, Microsoft up 148, Bed Bath Beyond up 46 cents. Um, interesting. Um, um, Bed Bath Beyond up 47, Pfizer up 28, HBQ up 27, Carvana up uh, 184, Twitter up six, Alphabet up 126, Amazon up a dollar 37. Welcome to the party, pal. We just got this started, and we're getting ready to roll here. Uh, with an opening. Thank you, everybody, so, so, so much. Um, 
And okay, Alberto, uh, what are you doing? Um, thank you for this uh, donation, and I think I'm reading you right. Um, uh, let me just uh, double check on what's going on here. Um, okay, uh, where am I here? Here I am, here, here I am, here, here I am, here. Uh, okay, hang on, hang on. Um, what's going on here? Um, Alberto, um, uncle, I'm sending you $100 for Jules, first class, check for PayPal. Jules, you're welcome. Um, I have the donation. It has arrived. Uh, Jules, uh, you've got to send me an email. Um, and um, um, send me an email, Jules, uh, right here, um, bingo, so that I have your email. And I'll send you a link. Uh, for class number one, um, courtesy of Alberto. How about that? Um, so I can take care of that. If, if any of you out there want to donate a class to anybody else, anytime you want to do it, uh, let me know uh, with an email or a message inside a PayPal donation. Let me know, and then I will um, I will be happy to forward a class to whomever you want a class forwarded to, to you know, as a gift or whatever. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, be more than happy to do. That's awful generous there. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alberto, as always. Uh, you're just, you're awesome, man. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, spicy armor. I'm writing, uh, I'm writing GameStop options. At, is it one or two at a time? Should I take the poor man class before trying it? Yes, uh, uh, make make sure you're watching poor man cover call classes. Yes, Aurora's number one thirty three. Um, Nick, uh, Uncle Bruce, I am the bag holder on ME. Will this ever go back above seven soon, or can I, or should I dump it? Twenty thousand ME average five thirty two will keep on averaging though. Um, and, and you know what? You could write. You can write calls against this against them if you want. Um, you can certainly uh, um, you know write uh, a 550 call good for a month and bring in some extra cash that way if you want to hold it but you're holding it right now we're up seven cents and well we were up seven cents last night i don't know what we're doing this morning um <clears throat> nick um yesterday was the wildest day of wild days for me i mean geez the volume was insane the price movements was ridiculous um i i i cannot uh, begin to describe the craziness we are up five this morning, uh, but uh, no volume at this point. We did over, what, 60-something million yesterday, yesterday share trading. There was some buying coming in here to this market. So um, hang tough through the morning, and let's see what's going on here to try to understand. Um, is there follow-through buying coming in, and will this run into the 550 range? And then, then you decide to start lightening your load, and okay. Um, but uh, that kind of volume tells me that there's more than speculation going on with ME. There's much more than that. All right, something's, like we said before, something's cooking. Alberto, Jules, you're welcome. Send him an email when you can. Aurora, way to go, Alberto. Um, uh, um, uh, Alex, Alberto, you are the best. Uh, Nick, Morgan Stanley raised Matterport price target to $7. Jules, Alberto, send to Uncle B. Yep, send me an email. Uh, Alberto, yes, to Uncle Bruce, paid already. Good morning, all from Coyote. Ajiba Bun Buns, uh, my best to you all. Uh, may the market be in your favor. Michael, uh, that was nice, Alberto. Um, Olivia, wow, Alberto, how sweet. Uh, Wavy only nicest chat on the internet. Tiff, Alberto, very generous. Thumbs ups to you. Joe, Olivia, wow, you are the real one, Alberto. And Wavy only. Um, mostly i don't know what that means welcome everybody to the show um and to the channel and to the chat uh we're going to go uh, members only right now for the chat because we're just open now for trading and during uh, market hours it's members only uh here um thank you all for um being with me this morning and thank you for helping us out with thumbs up please keep them coming if you can uh and please become subscribers if you could please please become subscribers of this channel and help us build our following okay uh we love you and we thank you all and um uh alberto you're awesome buddy um alberto sort of is our kind of reflects what this channel is like there's some incredible people here there really are uh all righty um 
there's my email address for um, for our friend. Um, send me um, send me your uh, your uh, send me an email to this email address, Jules, and I will get you a class. You will get class number one, courtesy of Alberto, and then you will get to work uh, learning how all this is working out. Okay, fabulous, fabulous. All right, thank you, um, Re uh, Rova. One hundred thirty six thumbs ups. Good day from Australia, Bama babe. Uh, that was too freaking sweet, uh, Alberto. Um, uh, Larry has rung the bells. Thanks, my man. Appreciate this. Uh, Wavy is number one forty three. Jules, Alberta. I'll definitely pay it forward. So appreciate this. Uh, DQ, thank you, uh, uh, Larry. Hayden, nice one, Alberto. One, wow, Larry. Let's go. Jason says Alberto is the goat. Olivia smiling. She is. Alberto, random acts of kindness are the best and uh, show who a person really is. You are awesome, Alberto. We can e help each other make money. This is great. Have a great day, everybody. I'll try to get rid of this troll as best I can, everybody. Um, and uh, we got the weird bot, obviously. I've been lingering on the edge of buying classes, says Hayden. think I'll take the plunge and pay it forward when I make my first bit of money, too. George, <clears throat> subscriber, not a member yet. Listen, almost every day, you truly have some wonderful people here. Thanks, George. I appreciate that. Um, and they do, too. Bartman, uh, happy Friday, everybody. Uh, um, touch grass, you guys are awesome. DQ, Alberto, now buy, a, now buy the bot a class. Uh, Michael, uh, I have 110 so far. Seven and a half expiring next Friday. Say it's still at 740-ish next week. What do you think these would be trading at if the stock's at 740? And uh, and I've got uh, the uh, these uh, contracts written. Uh, well... You know, they're going to go from 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10. I mean, they will shrink out, but you got to be, uh, you know, you got to have some thick skin there. Uh, stand tall, stand firm. Um, you know, when you're writing that close, you know, <laughs> you know what you're doing. You don't need to ask me, actually. You really don't. Um, but, um, hey, man, Um some some will take the strategy where they will not carry options with two or three days left. They've already moved on. They've rolled over um, because the last two or three days for the last 20, 30 cents isn't worth the risk against the position. On the other hand, stock goes to eight bucks, you're doing a rollover. So is it risk-free? As long as you do a rollover, yes, it is. So there you go. Alberta, wow, thanks, everybody. Happy Friday, all. I I am... Um, I tried uh, something. I can't remember. Not my SoFi stock market. Bruce. I am canceling my membership. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, LL, I'm number 146. Um, uh, buy all from dudes. Um, Bill, let's make some money. Flint Creek, wow, this group. Alberto, time to write. Let's go. Nick, 1500 in profit already on my Carvana short. Abama, babe, Larry, you are a constant. Um, deep value, Alberta. Way to go, Bill. I had a good week. I'm I'm too nervous to short today. Now there's how was GameStop yesterday, Nick? Uh, Nick it was a nice play. It says DQ Fidelity's running horribly this morning. Nick, wow, we zowie more than five grand profit now on Carvana short. Come on, baby, give me my moolah. Carvana <clears throat> is sitting at uh, what's it doing? I, I, I'm trying to find it now. I can't find it. Um, Carvana. There it is. Down 169, uh, 48.44, low of the day, 48.10. Rock and roll. Um, Alberto Agaudi. I thought it was my Wi-Fi, but it is Fidelity. Ah, there we go. Um, Larry, I'm a babe. I try to be. Michael, I'll put a stink bid in for 11. Maybe it'll hit today. Sold for 80. So, you know, it's a nice profit either way. Way to go, buddy. Way to go. I mean, this is the thing about co writing contracts, and when they expire out, they they die. That's it. That's it. Um, SoFi right now is sitting at um, is sitting at 734 down eight cents. So it's going your direction. Uh, Michael, uh, you know, you you know you're on it. It's all good. Uh, we're up 138, I think, on the Dow. Let's just double check this market. Uh, yeah, we're up 150 on the Dow Jones right now. Uh, we've got a 19-point gain on S&P. We're up 53 on NASDAQ. Just under half a percentage point higher. Not great, just a little. Oil down 158 to 92.76, okay? And we got uh, we got GameStop up 33 cents. 
only up 33 cents. <clears throat> AMC's up 58. Uh, ME down 17. Matterport is off 26. SoFi down a nickel. ATIP uh, half a penny lower. Rocket Lab down 21. Smart Rent down uh, 139 to 422. Here it is. Um, uh, 386,000. Is that accurate? We'll find out as the morning wears on. Um, I think this is an overreaction. I think this is ridiculous. I think this is a steal down here. Four bucks, this is a giveaway. Uh, the company's got 400 million cash on hand. Market cap, $820 million. Give me a break. Uh, half of it's in cash. I'm, I know, scared money, don't make money. Um, Bartman, holy cow, is smart rent coming down this morning. Buy it. Alberto, um, Gaiotti says, um, but every other program is running fine. Uncle Bruce's stream is running fine. Only Fidelity seems to be the outlier this morning. And Alberto says, Gaiotti, insane. Let's get that moolah. Uh, smart rent is super, super cheap. Pick it up. Spire, 151. Sixtera, uh, down 38 cents. ME, where are we on ME? Down 13.5 to 455.5. The volume on ME right now, 420,000. The low of the day, 451. We're at 456. We're bouncing back a little bit right now. We'll keep an eye on that. ME as the day wears on. The Dow is up 155. S&P down uh, up 20. NASDAQ up 61. We have gains on the indexes, down on oil. Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> what a day, what a crazy day. Uh, absolutely crazy, crazy day. Uh, thank you, Alberto, for your uh, for your gesture today. Pretty cool bean stuff, man. Pretty cool bean stuff. Uh, Jules, you got to send me an email. Just say, uh, say, you know, send me an email. Say, uh, Bruce, uh, Alberto uh, bought me a class. Uh, please send a link to this email address, to my email address, and I'll send you class number one. And uh, you can begin taking the classes on how to become an option writer and um, learn how this game works. We have 155 thumbs ups now. Thank you. If you think Alberto's gesture is a cool gesture to make, please hit that thumbs up button for us. Uh, we need the momentum. Matterport turning into a two-day pump and dump, says Bill. Bama babe, <clears throat> Coyote, uh, same problem with Fidelity, not updating at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me, everybody. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you here. Um, we're trying to stay on top of this uh, wild, wild market. 23 and me, 464, 465, only down four cents. Um, Carvana down 54 cents right now. Smart rent is uh, 418, down 142. It touched 409 for the low. I think that's the low. 409, it's 418. Pick it up. Uh, you might see a $1 pop just today on your dough. Um, it, this is ridiculously uh, low priced. It's only trading uh, fractions, like there's nothing. There's hardly any really trade. It's not millions, uh, 393,000. It's nothing. Someone got blown out. Someone is being blown out. This is a joke. This isn't going to last. I, I am certain that Smart Rent will not stay here much longer. That's just me, though. What can I say? Um, you gotta, you gotta have conviction. All righty. Um, GameStop thirty nine sixty nine uh, is where I think we're at right now. Um, hang on, as I move through everything here. My goodness, uh, thirty nine sixty nine up twenty four cents on GameStop. We're not going anywhere here. Um, AMC is only up thirty three. Um, AMC got to twenty seven bucks this morning. Twenty seven nineteen. It's twenty five seventy nine. Uh, AMC has gone zzz, the opposite direction on 11 million. Uh, GameStop got up to a 4060, now 39.53, up only eight. It's going zzz, down. Uh, that is what's happening there. Um, uh, interesting. GameStop up just eight cents right now. What is going on? Um, well, whatever's going on is what I expect will go on. GameStop's going lower. At the end of the day, GameStop is going lower. Um, AMC will eventually go lower, and buying puts is a good idea on AMC. AMC now 25.71, up just 25 cents. GameStop is up just a nickel, 39.50. Low of the day, 39.35. We're at 39.50 right now on GameStop. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Welcome to the craziness. Welcome to uh, the channel. 166 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, helping me out to get to 200 as quickly as possible. Let's make that a priority. Thank you all. Um, and we've got uh, 
activity everywhere. Alrighty. Um, the Dow up 173. The Dow, the GameStop is down the nickel now. AMC is only up 12 cents. ME up four. Uh, Matterport down 14. SoFi up two. Um, ATIP down up at 1.8 cents. Rocket Lab down a dime. Smart Rent now 409.5. Pick it up. Spire 151 down two tenths of a penny. Uh, we're on change. Sextera down 20 cents. Tesla up 250. Pfizer up 130 today to 49.60. Boeing up 65 cents. Apple up 147. HPQ up 16 cents. Cisco up 35. Twitter up 47. HD up 130. Carvana down 76 cents to 49.24. Now we're down 89 cents. Robinhood up 13 cents. Vanek up 292. IBM up 11. Microsoft up a buck. Goldman up 75. Google up 129. Amazon up 55. Meta Platforms up $3. Bed, Bath, and Beyond is um, unchanged. Um, <clears throat> Royal Caribbean up 61. U.S. Steel up two cents. Target up two bucks. J.P. Morgan up fifty three cents. Costco up four dollars. Walmart up forty cents. Walmart. Nvidia up two seventy eight. Disney up three dollars. Uh, American Airlines up a quarter. Netflix up three dollars. Moderna down twenty seven cents. The Dow up one seventy five. And uh, we got negative fourteen on GameStop. Negative seven on AMC. They both turned red after a strong start on AMC. They're down. ME up six right here. Interesting trading, I mean, to say the least. Uh, GameStop now 39.30. Uh, 30, uh, the low of the day, uh, 39.22. Uh, um, and the GameStop volume this morning, 514,000 shares. 39.22, low 39.32 is where we're at. Zzz, we're going down after starting at 40.60 this morning. Um, Interesting pullback on uh, GameStop. The more shocking pullback, AMC down seven cents to twenty five thirty nine after hitting twenty seven nineteen uh, early on. Uh, volume um, looks like uh, eleven point eight million or something like that. Waiting for my device to uh, wake up and do this correctly. Anyway, it looks like uh, an amazing run there. Uh, see what gives. Uh, hold tight. Um, I'll keep you posted as best I can. 39.23 on GameStop, down 22 cents. The new low of 39.15. We're at 29.23 right now, dropping again on GameStop. Um, continuing the drop from last night. You'll remember yesterday evening, uh, we gave up ground. Um, uh, we were sitting at around uh, 40.10, 40.09. And then we dropped uh, to uh, 39.35 uh, or 39.30 last night. And uh, here we are dropping again, well, 39.45. Here we are now, 39.30 on GameStop, still slipping. AMC down 8 to 25.38 uh, at the moment. Uh, the U.S. markets, uh, 163 gain on the Dow, half a percentage point. S&P up 26, NASDAQ up 99, that's 0. 0.78. Oil now down 2.34 to $92. We're backing off again on uh, oil. Uh, oil is backing off again. All right. Um, watching these markets uh, fluctuate a lot. Right now, the, the, the GameStop is trying a little uh, bounce here. 39.79 up 34 cents. Uh, that looks like a dead cat bounce right there. A little computer buying. I don't know if it'll last. AMC showing an 18 cent gain. We'll see if it can handle anything. GameStop trying to touch 40 right now, desperately. Uh, ME, 482, up 13. Uh, so Nick is getting a little relief there. Um, SoFi up 7. Matterport down just a penny, 597. ATIP at 95, down a half a penny. Rocket Lab, 584, down 2. Smart Rent, 413 now. Uh, low of 408. And now at 413 on 500,000 shares, smart rent. That is a cheap, cheap buy. An absolute stock market problem giveaway. This is not a company problem. Smart rent is not in trouble, but a shareholder is. And you can take advantage of this for the moment. I don't know how long this lasts. Is, um, is there an outfit like SoftBank getting blown out? I do not know, but that's the only explanation for uh, smart rent to be this cheap.
that's all I can figure. Okay, I got Jules. I got your email. I got your email. So um, uh, stand by after this show. I will send you your um, link to class number one, and uh, you can get you can get watching this weekend that class at your leisure whenever you want, and you can watch it as many times as you want because. You now have possession of that class. Way to go. Uh, fantastic. Way to go there, uh, Alberto. I'll make sure to send that uh, that link over after the show. Thank you, Alberto, for for your, uh, your uh, generosity. It's awesome, buddy. Um, what is up here with this market? Um, Mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay, Tiff is saying now, from how I understood Smart Rent Earnings Report, the main reason why they lowered their guidance uh, and had a much higher cost of revenue was supply. Supply issues. They have many contracts, but not enough supplies. Um, and Michael, if SoFi gets back into the eights, I think SoftBank may start selling again. And that would be a good thing because we want them out. We just, we just want them out. They'll be able to sell in the strength. The market can handle their sales. It's just that they have to offer it, and they, they likely will do systematic selling. And they'll be taken out, and we move on. Um, you get $50 million a day trading. You know, they can offload $5, 10000000 million a day. They'll be gone in a week. No big deal. Uh, Deuce Caboose, I'm number 163. A quick sick. Fidelity is becoming my least favorite platform. I have a margin account, but all of my buys are, are, are cash. I have 100% equity in my account, yet keep getting notifications for a minimum equity call. They got issues. Deuce caboose. SoFi alert. We now have another 100 million in deposits. Oh, yeah. Alberto, my fidelity is frozen. Um, miraculous. I'm number 165. Michael, weird. My fidelity is fine. Michael, got to run. See everybody at three with the libations. DQ, yeah, fidelity. ATP seems fine. Which interface are you using? Alberto uh, is going. Michael, thumbs ups to you. Um, Bartman says, blah, I had an 819 covered call exercised early. So expiring the 19th of August. Have to scratch my head on that one. Margin call on somebody, maybe? Time for a cash covered put, I guess. Now, I don't know what stock we're talking about. And so I have no info here. JJ, I'm giving up on ATIP. It's obviously in penny stock territory. Spire chart looks much better to me. I'll sell my ATP and buy Spire deep in the money calls. Alberto, I'm rebooting now. Be back, familia. Deuce caboose. Fidelity's working great. Says I'm down a bunch of money. All is normal. JJ, Spire, steady as she goes. Um, Gaiotti, Deuce Kabuski. Um, Alex, um, JJ, I'm buying ATIP. Want to offer me a discount? Seriously, the Y sell down here. The business isn't going anywhere. Only way is up. Uh, people are not going to stop going for physio. Deuce Caboose, what's the point of selling ATIP? Not like you're getting anything in return. Miraculous. Uncle Bruce here for my pep talk. Still sitting on the SoFi, April 23rd, or, or April 2023, 750 calls that I wrote. I sold at $1.20, and I've been scared how far away the price was getting. Even rolling out will cost me. I'm still holding, okay? SoFi, 750. SoFi is sitting now at uh, 746, up four cents. And um, uh, we have Miraculous sitting here on 750 calls. Uh, that are for April 2023. So the reality is, it, it, whatever they're trading at, it's all premium. Book, you know, it's all uh, um, um, time value because the stock is just under 750. They won't expire next week. It's in next April, so they got time to go. So the question is, what does he do? Well, right now you sit tight and just hold the position, keep the cash, do whatever you're doing with the cash, and if the shares back off to 680, uh, then likely your calls will back off and you decide whether to buy them back or not. That's option number one. Option number two, do you buy back your calls to write new calls down the road that might be, um, uh, they might be uh, further out for the same st strike price, further out, higher strike price, or a month from now, two months from now, uh, if these contracts dip into the 90s and the 80s and you now can roll into maybe December's um, seven and a halves or December sevens or December, depending on what the stock does, there's that. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to do, but right now you do nothing. You just sit there and just let them, uh, just part, let them park, park them there. Just wait. Um, let's see what the stock does. If the stock goes up, you'll do a rollover. You will. 
Uh, but right now, you don't have to do anything. Take advantage of a little dip. I mean, you know, if there's an another dip, I mean, there's going to be a correction in the market. We're going to go lower on the markets. The vibe is going to turn red, okay? It's going to come. And it may be that SoFi goes to 650 on a pullback like everyone else is on a dip. And that's when you buy back these calls for, a, I hope, a nice prop. Deuce, I've since calmed down since the ME fiasco. Thought I was going to shiv somewhat. Uh, DQ, I have a positive cash balance in my account for the first time since the June MNRA fiasco. I think I'll just observe today. JJ Spire, $1 calls equals deep in the money. Um, Deuce Caboose, is it Ski Friday? Bama Babe, DQ, wonderful. Barry Jam, was GameStop a stock split or a stock dividend? Um, kind of both, but I think they called it a dividend. Nick covered Carvana short with an $8,296 profit. Right on, buddy. Nice going. Moon, uh, Moon, Moon Man Moon, 172 thumbs up. DQ. Bama Babe, thanks, says DQ. I got assigned all the way out of GameStop, and I made some money shorting Tesla, but at least I'm not paying margin interest anymore. There we go. Nick, I'm waiting on for options on SoFi. Then I'm swapping my investments to SoFi. Uh, Nazareth, waiting for the company to offer SoFi trading, right? I am waiting for SoFi to be delisted. Then I will buy back in. Ah, oh, I got you. Bama babe. DQ, good job. I avoid, I avoid paying margin call if at all possible. DQ, Bama, wasn't the choice. Uh, Gaiotti, I love getting messages from uh, uh, Robinhood begging me to bring my portfolio back and even offering me interest. Mm, keep begging more. Alberto, I'm back. Wait, what? SoFi delisted? No. DQ, early assignment on written naked puts. Um, Nazareth, Alberto, just trying to trigger Uncle Bruce with a delisting talk. Albert, laugh out loud. I re rebooted, and your message was the first one. You had me Googling SoFi, laugh out loud. You got me. Triple G, lots of people having fidelity issues. Uh, Nazareth, happy Friday. DQ, nice Nick on that profit on Carvana. Matterport, up seven cents to 605. The Dow is up 162. GameStop, 4004. AMC 25.74. AMC is up a quarter, 28 cents. Game's up up 59 at the moment. ME is up four and a half cents, now up three cents to 472. Matterport up five. SoFi up three. ATIP down a penny, not a tenth of a penny. Rocket Lab up eight cents. Smart Rent at 417. It's coming back bit by bit by bit. It's coming back. 417. Pick up the Smart Rent. Spire um, up. Four and a half cents to 156 and a half. Sextera down 14. Tesla down a dollar. Uh, HKD, that AMTD Digital Inc. Uh, is uh, down to 200, down 14 bucks. Pfizer up 99 cents. Boeing up 72. Apple up a dollar four to 169.50. HBQ up 13 cents, 34.35. Cisco up 29 cents to 46.19. Twitter up 54 cents to 44.48. Home Depot up a dollar thirty-four, three twelve oh three. These gains are all fractionals. Um, I just uh, don't think we have a lot of uh, oomph behind this market here. We're topping out for a moment, I think. We'll see. Robinhood up twelve cents. Vanek up three thirty-nine. IBM up eleven cents. Microsoft up a dollar nine. Goldman down eighteen cents. Google up one twenty. Amazon up twenty-three cents. Meta Platforms up two seventy-eight. Bed Bath Beyond down a penny to 1062. It opened up today at uh where was it here? It was in the uh, high tens. And my machine is frozen. Uh, just you know, I, I try to tell you this info and it won't give it to me. Uh, there you have it. It's 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 driving me crazy. Uh 1070 on Bed Bath and Beyond up seven cents. I I, I try to tell you the highs and the lows. Anyway, um, what else? Um, Royal Caribbean up 63. Um, Costco's up three bucks. Walmart's up 17 cents. Nvidia up three dollars. Disney up three dollars. Uh, American Airlines up 24 cents. All right, 167 move on the Dow, and it seems to have topped out here. We don't seem to be going any further. A uh, quick six six. I would scale those 750s up by selling more at a higher premium. There you go, and that. There's all kinds of advice on how to do it, what to do. 149 gain on the Dow. Little pullback here. Uh, just a little. We're down two bucks on oil, 92.31. And uh, GameStop now 39.83. Uh, it's backing off again. Um, topped out here at 40 something. Got the 40.11. 39.94. Um, okay. 
fun times at the OK Corral on GameStop. $39.93 right now. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. Oh, my gosh. $39.88 um, right now. Disney, Intel, and Apple set the pace as the Dow rises by 165. That headline, a little old. We're only up 148. And, um, yeah, these stocks are up a bit but not a ton. Um, anyway, here comes Matterport, says Nick. Uh, Tiff, I bought more smart rent. Prepare for another drop. There you go. <laughs> uh, 39.87 on uh, GameStop. Uh, AMC, 25.66. Um, uh, ME up a nickel. Matterport up 11 to 6.09. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, SoFi up three. Smart rent is... Uh, Where's smart rent? Uh, it's uh, uh, at four fifteen a share right now, down one forty six. Uh, low four oh eight. There we are. Smart rent. It's still on sale. Barry, um, I would stink bid on SoFi. Um, I do a stink bid on SoFi when it drops to seven. SoFi definitely going back to ten plus by the end of the year. Shouldn't be having a soft bank hangover by Christmas. I think it'll be long gone by then. But yeah, yeah, they're going higher. Um, Thirty nine eighty nine on uh, on GameStop. The low of the day thirty nine fifteen, um, and we have uh, we have a high of forty sixty one. We're we're only trading about a dollar forty five in range, which is less than six dollars pre split. Uh, GameStop uh, total volume today is um, seven hundred thirty seven thousand. Not even two hundred pre split. Two hundred thousand pre split. Very quiet. AMC twenty five fifty seven. Only up eleven cents. It's backing up again. Um, AMC is backing up. ME up 6.7 cents to 475. Matterport at 608 up 11. SoFi up 6 cents. Um, Rocket Lab up 26 now to 612. Smart Rent 412. Spire 156 and a half up 4 and a half. That's what we got. That's what we're looking at. That is the, the, the prices at the moment as we are watching this opening. I don't know if this Dow can go anywhere today. I really wonder whether we're going to have a pullback as the day wears on. Uh, this first half an hour has not been bang, you know, gangbuster great. It's steady, but it's not gangbuster great. And uh, greed will kick in soon. Profit taking. Weekend, uh, you know, the, the traders will want to be sitting on cash through the weekend the, the, because of the developments over the weekend. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, we never know. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for being here uh, and uh, coming through for us. We have 184 thumbs ups. We only need 16 more to get to 200. If you're able to hit the thumbs up button for us, please do. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, we'll uh, hopefully hit 200 thumbs ups here in a little while. They're coming in a bit by bit, and I do appreciate it. Uh, we are, as a matter of fact, today is a big day for me. Um, although as some of you may know this, uh, today is August the 12th and today is my fifth year anniversary of being a YouTuber five years today. That's when I started traveling with Bruce, uh, August the 12th, 2017, uh, knowing zero, <laughs> not knowing, not knowing what I was going to be doing um, on that channel, other than talk about my travels, I thought. And I figured I would, uh, you know, pop up a bunch of, uh, make a bunch of videos of all the travels I've done over the years, being as old as I am. And then it became, it became kind of a cruising, a cruise ship channel. I started talking about how I love going on cruises with Jennifer Ben prior to the, to that channel. We started cruising in 2008. And uh, I found that whenever I made a cruise video, the views went up. It just went way up. Um, talk about a trip to Berlin. No, snooze fest. Um, talk about a trip to uh, Palm Desert, California. No one cared. Talk about going on a cruise to the Caribbean. Wow, the channel went nuts. So I started covering cruise news, um, cruise ship updates, cruise line updates back in 2017, 18. Built a following over there. And uh, 2020, I started this channel summer of 2020 and i started talking about stocks and um, personalities in the markets uh, elon musk and and then i started talking about gamestop 
and uh, mentioned how high the short position was back in 2020. And then in January 2021, I started going live, talking to folks like you, and uh, it's changed my life completely. Uh, this channel has taken over. It's the dominant channel of the two I have. And I've got followers all over the world who uh, follow me. I started doing classes, uh, started doing one-on-ones, uh, just uh, regurgitating everything I've known since 1979. And um, and here we are. I'm still doing it. Unbelievable. And this channel has uh, um, allowed Jennifer and I to uh, go on the road and, and travel this past summer um, and hope we can do more. First, we got to get Jennifer's hip looked after and see how things go. So, wow. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your support uh, uh, on this channel for a few years. The other channel now, five years. Uh, it's been a hell of a run. And um, uh, my daughter and I talked about it last night. She just shakes her head, can't believe it. She is of the social media generation. Um, and I am, uh, you know, I'm from 1955. And she just is blown away that her dad is a social media guy um, and that he's uh, making a living doing this. She's proud, she's pumped, and she's excited, uh, but she's also just blown away. And her friends, of course, who are all in their 30s, <laughs> uh, they see her say, how's your dad doing? Uh, or they say, I was, I'm was, i watching your dad. I see him. I watch him from time to time. And um, you should have heard what he said the other day. <laughs> So she hears about what goes on here, um, and uh, uh, she's uh, blown away. She's a busy gal in her own right uh, with her own thing, but uh, she is uh, fascinated by how this has happened, and she's she's jazzed for dad and um, and uh, wishes wishes the channels well. Thank you all of you who supported me, uh, whether it's on traveling with Bruce or here. We have 195 thumbs ups. Talk about support. You guys are supporting this channel with thumbs ups, and I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Talk about support and generosity. Thank you. I want to thank. Um, uh, I want to thank um, Miguel. Um, thank you, Miguel, for your donation on PayPal. It just came through here. Thank you, my man. That's awesome. Uh, fabulous. Uh, keeps us on the air. Uh, thank you so very much, and thank you, of course, to Alberto today for gifting a class. For uh, Jules, uh, gifting a class, we will have Jules studying this weekend, next week. Uh, we're going to put Jules to work. Learning Jules will learn how to become an option writer and uh, can pay it forward someday. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, that, that is, that's a cool thing. 196 thumbs ups now. I see, I think, four to go. We need four more thumbs ups to hit 200, everybody. Thank you very much for, uh, for bringing in the thumbs ups if you can. We do appreciate it. Let me get on some some more co comments here. Uh, what else up happening here? Um, Alex Bruce, any thoughts on the idea of buying SoFi ten dollar leaps now to use for poor man covered calls in twenty twenty three? It crossed my mind as a way to leverage up. Now there's there's an interesting idea. I mean. I'm not sure what they're trading for right now. I don't know what they're going for. But, you know, if you buy $10 leaps and they get into the money as the stock goes to $13, $15, so you can then use those leaps to write poor man covered calls. Um, you've got to wait it out, uh, obviously. Um, but, yeah, that can be done. Um, you'll make money on the leaps, of course. If the shares do go higher, go to 15 bucks. The leaps will have a $5 book value plus time value. And now you're writing options on those leaps. It's not a bad idea. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a leap of faith if to say leaps, um, by the way. By the way, 23 and me is up 15 cents here, 14 and a half to 483 coming on. Uh, so far, 744 is where the shares are at right now. So a $10 leap is obviously an out of the money contract. Uh, I'm just going to, out of curiosity, I'm just curious to see what they're trading at. I'm going to take a look at them. Uh, January uh, 23, I think you said. Let's take a look. January 2023, $10 leaps, 54 to 57 cents. So there you go. You're paying 50. Let's say you buy them at 55 bucks. Uh, 
you can buy 10 of them for $550. And if the shares go into the money above $10, they go to $12.15, whatever, you can now write calls against the 55 cent calls you bought. So if you can bring in 55 cents for a contract that's good for a month at, say, a $16 contract for a $15 stock, something like that, uh, that's equal to the entire price you paid for the leaps. And um, you can write the le you can write against the leaps until, you know, right till January 2023. That's an interesting way to play it. If you go further to January 2024, those $10 leaps are a little more expensive now. They're 170 so that's a lot more money. 1250s are 115 120 $15 leaps are $0.85. Cents. So you've got a bet that the shares will break 15 between now and 2024. But January 2023, hmm, interesting. Something to think about. Uh, Alex, I, I wouldn't talk you out of it, but I wouldn't tell you to put all your money into it. How about that? All right, uh, Duncan, five years, baby. Yeah, Duncan and I, we've been hanging out for five, almost five years. I don't know when Duncan joined me, but it was early on. Um, save your Uncle Bruce is NVIDIA at any risk. And considering the tension in Taiwan, it's not it's not great. The uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Company is the largest holding that the ETF has. So keep that in mind. Lame Duck, 186 thumbs ups. And we got more. Happy anniversary from Richard. Thanks, buddy. Bama, wow, congratulations. I knew it's been quite a journey. Uh, Gaiotti, cheers, Uncle Bruce. Congrats on doing it five years. Alberto, congrats. You are the goat. Moon, man, moon. Congratulations. Good work, Alberto. Let's all do a shot for Uncle's uh, the uncle's milestone. Let's do a shot for him. Happy fifths from Aurora. Lama, uh, Lame Duck, I bought 900 Smart Rent and 19 Tesla. To give me 100 Tesla after the split right on. Alex, congrats. Thanks, buddy. Michael, um, happy anniversary, Uncle Bruce. Nick wrote 26 August $42 strikes on GameStop. Uh, 20 calls for 208. Good move. I think so. $42 strike price brought in uh, 20 times 200, 4,000 uh, bucks, plus a little bit of change there for August 26, 14 days. Not bad for 14 days to make four four G's. I like it. Amy, love to hear how proud you are of your daughter. My dad was the same way. It's a precious gift. Right on. Flint Creek, there's the happy birthday cake. Woohoo. Uh, Hawkeye, happy uh, anniversary, Uncle Bruce. Also, Alberto, you set the bar with kindness. Tremendous. Flint, I love the video of the miniature museum on my travel channel. I got two of them. In Hamburg, Germany, Jen and I, I made two videos on Traveling with Bruce about the miniature museum. And oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. One of the most incredible things to visit. It took us, we were in there six hours, didn't see it all. Like, saw a lot, but there's so much more to watch. You can go back there a second day and see stuff you didn't see the first time. Alberto Hawk, I thank you. Thanks to all for all the positive comments, everybody from Alberto. Cindy, I am number 196 from Lake Huron. Uh, beautiful, thin Cindy. Thing. Happy anniversary from Sell My House Faster. Larry Titus, happy fifth, Uncle B. Bama Babe, Alberto, I did a shot of coffee for you. Um, Alberto Babe, laughing out loud, says Alberto. Thank you, everybody. Here we go. Thank you all, all of you, for everything. Uh, so appreciate it. Uh, I think someone else just sent me a PayPal donation. I think it just hit. I missed it just as I turned on my phone again. My phone shut off. I turned it on. There it is. Uh, thank you to Stuart. Stuart Von Stein. Thank you very much, my friend, for the PayPal donation. I do appreciate it. An appropriate donation for my fifth anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thank you very much. Um, all of you, thank you for being here and supporting this channel, as you always do. It is so much appreciated. 203 thumbs ups. Yeah, baby. We've done it again. Another 200 of are in the bag. And YouTube keeps getting hit with these analytical signals. Send viewers to this channel. And that's what we want them to understand. Uh, bring them, baby. Bring them in. People who want to make money in the stock market should be watching this channel. Look at Rocket Lab up 49 cents to 635. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? Nice. 
Uh, SoFi up eight. Uh, GameStop still at 39.69. Uh, AMC's negative, negative 34, 25.12. Matterport up 27 to 625. ME up 23 and a half. Nick, it's coming, 492. Spire up seven and a half to 159 and a half. Um, ATIP just down three quarters of a penny. Smart rent down uh, down at 398. This is the bargain of the day, kids. This is the bargain. I don't know how long it'll stay down, down here. Eventually, this will pop back to five, 550. Sixterra, $10 down a penny. Apple up 195. Goldman down six. Cisco up 36. Tesla up uh, 1049. Arc up 103. Microsoft up 162. Bed Bath Beyond 1085 up 23. Pfizer up 93 cents. HP up 14. Um, Carvana up a nickel now. Uh, Twitter up 54. Centinos, Alphabet, Google up 147, Amazon up 65 cents. That's what's going on right now. Um, we're at up 47 cents on Rocket Lab. What a run. Uh, interesting, 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 interesting. Um, falling gasoline prices, Boeing, 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 consumer sentiment. University of Michigan data suggests. Yeah, people like it when gas prices go down. That's that's uh, that's breaking news. Uh, yeah, they they are they're happy, happier, less upset. Yes, a uh, thirty nine sixty nine on GameStop up twenty four, backing off from our recent uh, forty dollar sixteen cent range. Thirty nine seventy now on GameStop. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, Bama babe, Uncle Bruce. I have been reading about the crisis on the Rhine River in Germany and the supply slowdown it is causing over in Europe. Will this affect us? Yeah. If Europe's economy keeps slipping back, and it is, and the river levels in Germany and elsewhere are at such low levels that barges can't move goods, that means they have to be moved in other ways. The problem is the kind of goods that are moved by barge are stuff like uh, grain and coal and, and steel, ignis, a kind of bulky stuff. You have to put that on trucks. You can't move a barge load on a truck. You need a dozen trucks, two dozen trucks. We're talking way more money here. We're talking increased prices, higher inflation. We're talking bad news Europe, bad news America, bad news Canada. It's not good. Bad news for China. Europe needs to be firing on all cylinders, and that means water levels have to be normal. Normal. They're not normal. It's not good. Uh, spicy Happy University. I love both your channels. Thank you so much. Uh, not my SoFi. Come back to ME. Come back. Tiff, I told you I bought, and it dropped. Uh, Credit Savage, good morning, Uncle uh, Bagel Familia. Hope everyone is well and making money with covered calls. Thank you, Credit Savage. Good morning. Sell my house fast over Marlboro. Uncle Bruce, um, looking at the options chain for Matterport, Seven dollar strike for next Friday is only twenty cents. Would you have to go to the you have to go to the end of October for sixty cents to get some premium on Matterport? Interestingly, uh, from time to time, things uh, you know don't make sense. Now Matterport is six twenty eight. Uh, you're talking about a seven dollar call, seventy cents out of the money. You're talking twelve percent out of the money. That's the kind of premium you're going to get. Uh, that's what it is. Now, Tiff, sell my house fast enough for Marlboro. The ask for September 22 is 50 cents. Interesting. Um, and the thing, too, to remember, <clears throat> this is a, a $6 stock, 628 stock, and you're talking about 50, 60 cent premiums, all right? Think about it this way. Let's say we want to compare this to GameStop premiums. You take a $6 stock and multiply it by 6, you get a $36 value. 630 times 6 is like $38. GameStop is $39. 6 times 50 cents is $3. 6 times 60 is 360 for a contract. That's what GameStop contracts trade for. It's the same. So it's not a bad premium. It's typical. It's just relative. You have to train your brain on this. Yodi, these water levels are my new normal. Uh, sell uh, my house. Tiff, true, but there isn't much time premium. JJ, Uncle Bruce, railway is the obvious counter apart to European canal transport. Yes, but again, it's more expensive to move it. 
you've got to get it off the barge. You've got to get it onto rail. You have to, at the moment, the items that were moving by barge have been moved to the barge transportation network. Now you got to get it onto the rail network. There isn't room on the rail network for a whole bunch of barge stuff. It's not like they have a 50 trains waiting with nothing to do. They're all running with what they're running on. This is a problem. It's a pinch point. It's a supply chain pinch problem. Higher costs, lower productivity at the factory level. Problem for the European economy. This is not good. Um, hey, Uncle B, the Credit Savage. So Chase increases their ownership of SoFi by 103%. They have been buying chunks and chunks of the company. And I am getting ready to believe that Chase may make a move for SoFi. What are your thoughts? It's possible. Uh, as as a soft bank exits, Chase comes in and others, anything is possible. You will all know we're now dealing with a 753 stock on SoFi, not a 453 stock, not a 553 stock. We're here at 753 and we know, we all know that we can have a $2 breakout tomorrow monday to 9 50. we all know it so anything is possible on sofi and it's good not bad good yes that was a great question alberto says there tiff <clears throat> Coyote, my entire life i lived near the rhine and let me tell you we didn't have these issues in the 90s so sadly yes this is the new normal low water levels because of climate change the runoffs yeah, we have issues here. There are all kinds of climate issues that affect the world at large. And you don't think that a problem in Ukraine is a problem for us in North America. You wouldn't think that a problem in uh, the Rhine River would be a problem for us in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. You wouldn't think that Chinese people not paying mortgages in China will eventually have a problem for, for those of us in Regina, Saskatchewan. It does. We're connected. It's a problem. It's not good. The deniers are idiots. The deniers are deniers, and they will always be deniers. And they're not—they're not problem solvers. They're just problem deniers. And so, okay, be what you want. It's a free country, I guess. So you're allowed to be a denier. But the rest of us are watching the effect on everything from what's happening. And you don't think the Rhine River is down? Well. Travel over there and see for yourself. You know what? I, you don't have to believe me. Fly to Frankfurt. Go to the Rhine River. Find out for yourself how low the river is. Um, you know, sorry, can't help you. Uh, but Exxon's quarterly profits. Look at that. Uh, credit service. Chase is big enough that they don't even have to change anything about SoFi. They literally ha can have SoFi become a division of Chase. Uh, SoftBank is, a, is in big trouble, but Chase is going nowhere. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you, Craig. It's possible. Uh, I just don't, I don't know. I've been saying all along with any of our former SPACs, including SoFi, at any time, any time, I might come on the air and say to you folks, here's a development that just came through the SEC filings. And I might say to you one day that company so-and-so just uh it's just been reported that a an investor has picked up 15 percent of one of our former SPACs and that they're uh, they're looking to join the board of directors and they're looking to do whatever i mean a takeover we may have an outside group on any of our of our existing SPACs come in at any time and take a position that has to be reported through the sec all hell will break loose it will and i don't know which one is first i don't know when it'll happen if it'll happen how it'll happen but it could happen and i keep warning you that as cheap as these spacs are these former spacs are under 10 bucks each and they're sitting on a mountain of money why wouldn't one of them be taken over why not it's very they're publicly traded companies uh, they're vulnerable go to these people ain't flying to Germany to measure water levels. I can promise you that they can't afford it and they probably don't have a passport because they probably have issues that they can't get a passport. I know, I know. Uh, George, uh, Google Earth, uh, yep, there you go. Coyote, they haven't left their rural southern villages since 1982. 
<laughs> okay, never mind. Let's move on. Okay, let, can we move on? Let's go somewhere else. BW JP Morgan, the first quarter filing, had 1.3 million shares of SoFi on their books. As of their filing at the end of the second quarter, it was up over 3 million shares on their books. So if legacy competition is loading, so should we. Hello. Yeah. You think JP Morgan are idiots? They're not. They're pretty smart. And do you think 3 million shares is a lot of money for JP Morgan? No. No, it's chump change. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tiff, every environmental scientist agrees on the following. Climate change is man-made issue that will have terrible consequences if we do not act now. The only thing they do not agree on is how bad it is. And there you go. There you go. It is a mess, and it's uh, causing havoc. It certainly is. <clears throat> AMC, <clears throat> still down. It's down 11 cents. The Dow's up 125, and only 125. GameStop is still holding a gain of 65 cents to $40.10. It's hanging in there. Uh, if the Dow wants to break down, and it is backing off, now down, it's only up 113 now. If this Dow goes red and it brings the other two markets with it, we could have a sell-off this afternoon and then a big one on Monday. Um, I'm telling you, we're primed for a pullback. We are primed up. This is why I'm saying take a look at the idea and the possibility of writing options on ME, uh, 556 bucks. It's 502 now. Way to go, ME. Matterport, maybe sevens. Uh, SoFi, maybe eight and a half, nines. I don't know. Maybe looking at writing options on Rocket Lab, but we are up 82 cents on Rocket Lab. Have you noticed that? Six. 68 on your rocket lap today we're at the high of the day here uh, roughly uh, just about at it 1.9 million traded looking good on rocket lab you might want to look at writing seven and a half eight dollars i don't know um smart rent you buy it 377 just buy this stock buy this stock this is ridiculous spire you pick it up Six Terra, 991, writing 10s or 11s might be the way to go. It's down a dime. In the meantime, uh, Pfizer's up 85. Boeing is up 95. Apple is higher by uh, 175. HPQ is up 7 cents. Cisco's up 32. Twitter up 33. Home Depot up 133. Vanek up 450. IBM down a penny. Microsoft up 147. Goldman down $1.16. Google up 153. Amazon. Is only up 56 cents. I think we're topping out on some of these stocks. For the moment, we're now up 107 on the Dow. We're slumping again. We're slumping. Uh, we're up 25 on uh, S&P. We're up 117 on NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is up 0.92. S&P up 0.59. The Dow is only up 0.32. So the Dow is leading it lower. Now 0 0.30. It's only up 101. The Dow is backing up. Oil down 276, down 282. Oil is dropping now to 9152. We're dropping on oil. Okay. The Dow is about to go, and it just did. It's now only up 96. It's just dropped under the 100 level gain level. It's now only up 96 points. Falling back. The Dow is falling back, up now 90 points. It's up 0.27 of a percentage point. It's backing up. Uh, NASDAQ is backing up. It's up 109. Down. It's only up 0.86 now. S&P is backing up. Okay, there it is. That's kind of, I'm waiting for profit taking to come in here. I'm waiting. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What else? What else? What else? Um, Five-minute warning until the markets in Europe close. So that could be causing a backup, too. I'm going to sell more $10 SoFi April 23 covered calls when we have another $2 run right on. Credit Savage, the Credit Savage, a.k.a. Gold, is here for you, baby. Uh, okay. Um, welcome all to the program. Um, watching all the markets, all the craziness. Thank you all so much for uh, for hanging out, being with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you for those of you who have thrown a thumbs up our way. 210 are in the house now. Thank you for 210 thumbs ups. 
Appreciate that. 82 cent gain on the Rocket Lab. Last I looked, now I'm showing it at uh, 668 on Rocket Lab. What a day it's having today. Uh, very interesting. 1.8 million volume there. SoFi is up a dime. GameStop holding a 73 cent gain to $40.10. AMC is up one penny. It's just hanging on. Matterport up 36. Lovely. Uh, 23 me up 28 cents. Lovely. Spire up six cents. Yeah. ATIP is up a penny. Come on, baby. Smart rent at 380 a share. Uh, that is a bargain, a low of 374. Pick it up. Um, uh, Sixterra is uh, down three cents. Apple up 172. Goldman down 96. Cisco up 32. Tesla up 520. Arc up 112. Microsoft up a dollar eight. Bed Bath Beyond up 33. Pfizer up 89. HPQ up a nickel, Carvana down 92 cents again, another wave lower. Twitter up 32, Alphabet up 113, and Amazon up 20 cents. There you go. 74 cent gain on Rocket Lab and 4011 on GameStop, just up 65. The uh, range for um, uh, GameStop today, the high was 4061. We're at 4009, the low 39.15. So. And AMC just went red again, uh, yet again. All righty, there's where we're at right now, kids. Uh, welcome to the party here. Uh, so far, it's option expiry day today. Oh boy, um, I reshorted Carvana. I covered, and I covered it again. Eleven thousand four hundred profit on the short, right on. I picked up four thousand more SoFi with the profit from Carvana, right on, <laughs> right on, Nick. Nick is going to own SoFi. Uh, you think uh, you think JP Morgan's got so far? Nick's got so far. There you go. Right on, Nick. Well done, buddy. Well, well done today. All righty. GameStop forty dollars thirteen cents. Forty oh nine on GameStop. Forty oh nine. AMC down three cents, going negative again. Right here, right now. That's what's happening this morning. So far on option expiry day. Two hundred twelve thumbs ups. Uh, some of the greatest viewers in the world are here, and I thank you, and I thank you, and I thank you. And uh, Credit Savage uh, commented here, yeah, I bought back all my covered calls, and I'm going to just start adding more SoFi. Goal is to get 10,000 SoFi and just sit on my ass for 10 years and just write blocks of covered calls to make money while I travel with my wife. I, I can't argue with that move, writing 100 calls on SoFi. And traveling and traveling and traveling and traveling. You, if you can make a dollar a month on 100 contracts, that's 10000 a month. That, that's travel money. You can make $2 a month on SoFi. It's 20000 a month. Well, that's good traveling money. Uh, yeah, not bad at all. Uh, way to go, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for your support. We're coming up to the two-hour mark of my broadcast here, um, as late as I was this morning. Um, thank you all for waiting it out with me. Welcome to Option Expiry Friday. I'll be back on today at uh, 3 o'clock for the final hour of uh, this market and our options and see what's going on. Um, going to be crazy, perhaps. 40.05 on GameStop. We're coming back to that 40 level on GameStop again. Just up 60 cents. Uh, AMC now down 27, 25.19. The low on AMC, 24.87. So it, it wouldn't take more than 30, 40 cents from here to hit a new low on, on the day on AMC. Uh, the volume is 24 million, and that is inadequate. Uh, that is not enough to run this market higher. So there, there might be some trepidation coming into this dividend thing because the minute the dividend is handed out and everybody gets these two classes of shares, the question is, well, what do you sell? Uh, do you sell any of it? Um, do you sell half of your commons and buy up a bunch of the preferreds and run them? It, well, if that happens, the commons are going to go down to 20, 18, 16, and the preferreds are going to go to five, seven, nine. Like, what? what's going on? Um, will the preferreds go up enough to compensate what the commons are going to do? Because the commons could go to 15. But the preferreds might only go to six. That's a $21 market. If the commons go to 13, 
and the prefs go to seven, that's a $20 combined market. It's right now $25. It was 27 this morning. What do you think? Uh, do you think the preferreds are going to go to 12 and the commons are going to stay at 15? That's a $27 price, right? It's only two, a buck and a half more than this. What? I can't see it holding 25. I, I just combined. No way. There's we have 500 and 16 million prefs coming out uh, that it's going to flood the world with a bunch of those we'll find out um gamestop 40 26 up 81. okay uh to recap as i say my goodbyes um matterport 6 34 up 36 um me up 26 to 495 rocket lab up 80 cents now just pushing 670 here looking good on rocket lab today really good um Smart Red 382, a bargoon, bargoon, bargoon. That stock is way overcorrected. BW Bruce, really low on cash. They're offering March 23 call options for Smart Red. Do you think buying the 250s on this dip is worth it if the if we're light on cash, if I do it on a stink bit? Well, if you can buy it at book value and barely over book value, that's the only way I would even consider it because the stock itself is super cheap uh sell my house fast i got stinkers in on me matterport spire rocket lab and so my fingers across there's a credit savage uncle bruce what's a good point to buy more puts on royal caribbean and carvana i don't think these companies are out of trouble at all they are hemorrhaging cash i didn't know why i don't know why people are buying yeah again i i don't like talking about buying options <laughs> i just don't like I just want to talk about writing options. Um, stay on that side of the coin and stop looking at this side of the coin. You really, it would really behoove all of you to forget about going long on contract. I know I occasionally mention it, but I mean occasionally, not all the time. Um, you really got to be careful because the the allure of a quick buck always gets people in trouble. This is why slot machines are so powerful in Vegas. The most brilliant people in the world end up in Vegas on a convention or on a holiday or whatever. And they dump hundreds of dollars into stupid slot machines that they know are going to take their money from them. They know it. And what they get out of it is maybe a Ryan a Coke. Um they lose hundreds of dollars for Orion Coke that they gave a tip on, no less. Um, uh, Credit Savage, look, um, I, I don't know, man. I just, uh, I know that Royal Caribbean is overpriced, but I don't know if there's a huge opportunity to make money on Royal Caribbean only because a $40 put will only make you money if it goes to 30 because the premium you got to pay is so ridiculous. So they might be priced out of the market. On Carvana, could be exactly the same problem. On Carvana, it could well be that the premiums on puts are so stupid that you just can't do it. And I've been warning you guys on the premiums on AMC puts. You've got to be careful not to overpay to get into a put, only to find out that the stock drops $5 and you made $0.50 cents profit. Got to be careful, okay? Uncle Bruce, on a lighter note, the FBI finally got the most sensitive state information ever back from that orange drifting clown in Florida, so he may now go to prison. Boy, I'm hearing stuff like um, the potential of nuclear secrets. We're in like a we're in a room with a flimsy lock. Um, uh, his staff was asked numerous times to beef up the security of the of any of the documentation they had to be rebuffed. Um, just it, It's just like non-cooperation with all kinds of, I mean, wow. What, what, how many boxes have already been taken out of there? What, three, five months ago, six months? It wasn't, wasn't there like 10, 20 boxes of material that wasn't supposed to be there is now back in the archives in the rec. It's U.S. government property. Um, and now the, the, this this move oh man this is serious stuff and these charges they stick that you you can't just flick them off uh this this is gonna be a problem um i don't know my friend we'll see 
spicy. GameStop is running. Um, 40 50 up a dollar. Uh, BW, why doesn't everybody wait until the news comes out and quit following all kinds of stupid conjecture? The media has never been truthful for the past 15 years. There you go. Well, you know, when you don't trust media, you don't trust any media. And so no matter what anybody says, you don't trust it. You don't trust, you'll never get the truth. You'll never believe any version of the truth. You never believe any version of anything. Okay. If you want to take that move, go ahead. Um, if the Attorney General of the United States, <laughs> the number one guy, the head of the Justice Department, comes out and says, we're prepared to unseal the entire affair so everyone can see what's going on. We're not prepared. To, we're not interested in hiding anything. And that's being slammed? Then I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I just I don't know what to tell you. But this is not anything to do with the market. Um, on an even lighter note, who just worked with A.G. Merrick Garland and B.P. Kamala Harris sister? You guessed it, M.E. My company is now paying me to work whenever I want for two times, a half, two and a half times the money. Yay. Okay, I, I don't understand. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, go nice. M or it's me. Okay. Who, who is, uh, who's working? Uh, 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 my company is now paying me to work whenever I want for two and a half times the money. Okay. I got you. Nicely done. Nicely done. Um, JJ, the current savage, it's all about timing. Use put spreads to reduce price, less profitable, but less risky. And uh, BW, uh, it's not that I don't trust me. They are sen they they sensationalize everything, everything. So does every YouTuber. So does every Instagrammer. So does every uh, TikToker. Clickbait, we call it. Um, you know, it's it is what it is. I mean, these are businesses. Remember, the news organizations that are out there are businesses, and the uh, you've got to be careful if you believe in news sources from profitable money-making news companies you're going to get caught in the trap of they need eyeballs all the time to sell advertising if you follow news from non-profit news sources which are few and far between you can cut them a bit of a break and go they don't get a lot of eyeballs anyway because they're non-profit they don't have money to promote themselves and they're bringing out info as they see it and so you believe it or you don't you trust it or you don't and that's the way it is um let's just be fair it may have been at one time that walter cronkite was the most trusted man in america the news anchor for the cbs evening news in case you don't know who this is even when walter cronkite read the news for half an hour every weekday and only on weekdays the guy was paid a million dollars a year to be behind that desk and america loved him for it but there were ads on the cbs evening news there was only 21 minutes of news and nine minutes of advertising on the cbs evening news with the most trusted man in america so they were in the money making business as well and he was the most trusted man in america now i have no, i never had a problem with walter cronkite i never will um and I look at news and I go, okay, well, you know, if it's if you're if you're behind a certain political party, you can understand that maybe you don't want to, you know, believe everything you see, or it might be slanted towards the left or the right. Um, you want to watch PBS news, a news on public broadcasting, and you want to call it socialist, it's up to you. But these guys uh, need donations to stay on the air. Um, Again, are they being donated to from the right or the left? Or just from people in general and the government in general? Again, you decide. If you want to watch news from the BBC, the CBC, and from other sources internationally to see what's happening in your own country, knock yourself out. Uh, you may or may not believe it. Again, you're all on your own to decide for yourselves what you want to believe and not. It's okay. It, you're allowed to do that. It's all right. It is the way it is. It's 2022. It's not 1964. Got it. I got it. Um, please stick to the stock market and leave the politics at the door. Um, Alberto, the credit service, nice. Congrats. BW, most of follow Sky News out of Australia. Sell my house fast. Breaking news at 6.30 a.m. this morning. The sun came up. Yay. And JJ, I follow Project Lincoln here on YouTube. Uh, former somebody who are fed up and left the party. Alberto, sell my house. Fake news. Laughing out loud. All right, I don't want to talk politics. I'm not going to talk politics. Guess what I'm going to do now? And this is not fake. I'm going to go eat breakfast. This is not fake news. 
I'm going to go eat breakfast now because I'm hungry. And thank you, Chris Evans. Yes, sir. I left work to stay at home with the kids and still I'm at home today. But if they call me and want my services now that I've retired, they're going to have to pay me a lot more than before. There you go. Chris Savage, way to, well done, buddy. Uh, Larry, bagel, bagel, bagel time. Thanks, buddy. Uh, that's the message right there. I got to go and eat something. Thank you all. I'll see you this afternoon at 3 o'clock, okay? Alberto, thank you for this donation for the class. I'm going to send him the class or send Julie the class right now. And <clears throat> thank you for your kind wishes on my fifth anniversary of being a YouTuber. I really appreciate it. Thank you for these donations, for subscribing, and the thumbs ups, you guys. You were great today. 217 have come in, and I appreciate it. Making money on covered calls. We'll see you this afternoon at 3 o'clock to shut it all down today and for the week. And let's see what happens. Guys, take care. We'll see you a little later. Uh, thanks for five years of service. You got it. Have a good breakfast, Uncle B. That, that ain't fake news. I'm going to eat. I'll say, see you guys later <laughs> today. Bye. <laughs>